In New York City, where I live and where I grew up, one is bombarded with media imagery constantly. You walk out your door, a taxi cab goes by, there's an advertisement on top of it, a bus goes by, it's plastered with advertisements. This has been both a blessing and a curse for me. I certainly have made a lot of work about that domineering presence. So I'm tremendously fortunate that I'm an artist and I can talk about that with my work. Julia Jaquette Unrequited in Acts of Play marks the artist's first major museum survey. Looking back on 10 years of work, this exhibition features paintings, ceramics, works on paper, and two large-scale site-specific murals created for the exhibition. Julie Jaquette's work focuses on the commodification and commercialism of these images of desire which are drawn from advertising campaigns. And so she is constantly calling magazines and imagery from the 1950s through today from magazines and cookbooks and all kinds of resource material. And what she's doing is drawing upon those images and looking at how um, our ideas of desire have really been formulated for us by the advertising imagery or by who Julia calls the evil geniuses behind the imagery of desire. Julia considers herself a pop artist via feminism, and she's often looking at images of women and the pervasiveness of objectification and inherent desire in the representation of women. Uh, nowhere is this more visible than in the painting The Mouths of the Four Gorgons, where Julia takes these four beautiful lips and recasts them as Medusa and her three sisters. So these beautiful models with their mouths parted instead become these devourous witches. As part of the Wellens programming, we try to provide unique opportunities for Hamilton students to work alongside artists. Uh, in this exhibition, five Hamilton students worked with Julia Jaquette to create the two site-specific murals that are currently on view, and the scale of which is the most ambitious the artist has created to date. This exhibition focuses on the four main bodies of work that the artist has been pursuing for the last decade. So we have text and image in which the artist um, depicts food alongside text of her own writing, um, exploring her feelings of doubt and inadequacy. We have water and liquor, which are these large scale, immersive, almost abstracted images. Um, we have the luxury series drawn from high scale luxury ad campaigns. And we have the images of women, which are both represented in painting and in ceramics. Julia looks at the type of imagery that she draws from not necessarily as completely critique. She is critical of it, but at the same time, she expresses her own collusion with the beauty of these images. And we as the audience also have that same kind of vulnerability. We look at this imagery, it is beautiful, it is sumptuous, we can't help but want it. And as we're surrounded by this type of imagery, it does d drive our desires towards a lifestyle which is not a reality, but which we can't help but yearn for. Playground of My Mind is a parallel project that the artist has been developing for the last 10 years. And this particular suite of drawings traces the artist's own upbringing in New York City in the 1970s, um, showing the upheaval and financial crisis, and also that it was a period of change, both social and civil. And um, she really delves into all those aspects in this graphic memoir, Playground of My Mind. Um, what's interesting about it is that she, she 
uh, anchors the whole story around these adventure playgrounds which were developed in New York City between the 1960s and 1970s, and were these spaces that were kind of the result of brutalist architectural elements. So you had these modular forms that didn't dictate how, as a child, you were supposed to interact with them. There was always an element of risk, there was always this element of creativity um, that was present in your interaction with these spaces. And Julia uses that as a way of talking about childhood and a way of talking about the artistic process. And she can draw a direct line to that influence on her as an artist. Um, the book moves from New York to Amsterdam, which are both places where the artist lives. In Amsterdam, there was a similar equivalent to the architects who were working in New York, and his name was Aldo van Eyck, and he created over 700 playgrounds in Amsterdam between the 1950s and the 1970s. And they also utilize these similar elements, these modular forms that he rearranged in different, um, in different arrangements depending on the playgrounds. And elements of both the playgrounds in New York and the ones in Amsterdam still survive today, um, although there have been a lot of changes. Uh, but Julia's really talking about a time and place that was kind of magical, even though it was also a time of difficulty. Um, and she utilizes the form of a graphic memoir to both illustrate and write about her personal uh, story as an artist and as a child growing up in New York.